as Thai hosts to collaborate with Asia University Taiwan. And here we have an amazing speaker, Dr. Xu Chuan Chen from, from Foreign Languages and Literature Department, Asia University Taiwan. Now allow me to elaborate today's agenda. First, we will hear the opening speech from the head of English department, Diponegoro University from Mr. Optifa Chandra. And then we are going to hear the introduction introductory and main presentation from Dr. Xu Chuanzhen from Korean Languages and Literature Department, Asia University, Taiwan, which will be guided by the moderator. After that, we will have a question and answer session. So prepare your questions. So this is a rare opportunity to have because you guys can ask anything when the question and answer session begins. And finally, we will have the final conclusion and also closing of today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to listen to the opening speech delivered by the head of English department, Faculty of Humanities, Diponegoro University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Oktifa Heri Chandra. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Excellencies, the Honorable Guest Speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Su Chuan Chen from Asia University, distinguished participants, it gives us great pleasure to extend to you all very warm welcome. On behalf of the Faculty of Humanities, Diponegoro University, we are delighted and honored to host a guest lecture entitled Life Writing and Displacement in Asian and Women's Literature and Art. This is not the first conference held as the manifestation of good relation and cooperation between Asia University and Faculty of Humanities, Panukoro University. We have also invited Dr. Su Chuan Chen as the main speaker in other academic meetings, namely International Conference on Language Maintenance and SHIP, and recently, Asia University and Faculty of Humanities, Diponegoro University, are still working on challenging and promising programs, namely student exchange program. In the future, we do really hope that we can collaborate this cooperation in other programs. Related to the topics of today's lecture, we include women's study as one of courses in our curriculum. Our students have knowledge on women's study after they take feminism, gender, and queer theory, and other related subjects of the study. And today, we are so lucky because we are going to have a description on women's literature and art, especially Asian women's literature. Students and other participants will be able to enrich their perspective and to elaborate this topic during the questioning and answering session of this lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, I do really hope that this lecture will give you insight and advantages to all participants. In this opportunity, I would like to thank to the invited speaker, Dr. Su Chuan Sheng. We also would like to thank to the committee, Dr. Deli Nirmala and Hum and her teams for organizing this event and ensuring it runs so smoothly. And also thank you for all participants. Well, let's begin our guest lecture that will be hosted by Ms. Eta Farmaculia, the candidate doctor. God bless you. And then thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Optifa Hari Chandra, for the opening speech. Before we continue, allow me to remind to all participants that you can kindly turn on your camera features so that we can see you guys, we can feel the presence from all of the participants. And don't forget um, to fill out the attendance form once the form is shared in the chat box because the certificate of attendance will be issued if the participants actually come to the to this event. 
Ladies and gentlemen, now let me introduce you to the moderator for today's guest lecture. The moderator is Mrs. Eta Farmacelia Nurohadi, PhD candidate from Louisiana State University. We are now continuing to the next agenda. We will hear the introductory and main presentation from Dr. Xu Chuanchen from Foreign Languages and Literature Department, Asia University. Taiwan, which will be guided by Mrs. Eta Farmacelian Rohat. To Mrs. Eta, I present the floor to you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Angi. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be the moderator for today's uh, guest lecture, live writing and on, sorry, love writing and displacement in Asian women literature and art. Before we start, I would like to introduce our professor, our speaker today. Uh, Associate Professor Su Chuan Chen, or let's us uh, let's just call her Professor Jennifer. It will be easier. So Professor Jennifer is uh, an Associate Professor. Uh, she's also Chair of the Department of Foreign Languages and Literature in Asia University. Professor Jennifer got her PhD from in Comparative Literature from Fujian University, Taipei, Taiwan. And uh, her research fields and interests includes comparative literature, Asian American literature, third women, third world women literature, gender ethnic cultural study, literature and art, and also visual art studies. And we are lucky that today we are going to hear part of her research interests and also, uh, yeah, as Professor Jennifer also has a book, published a book uh, in 2022, so it's very recent. The title is Body Sci-Fi Hypertext, Female Narratives and Cross-Cultural Studies, published by Taipei Kong Kong International. And uh, I think we also, uh, the head of the department mentioned that we also have cooperation, so probably in the future if you're interested because Professor Jennifer uh, has a number of classes in charge in includes introduction to Western literature, literary theory and cross-cultural imagination, film literature, literature and creative thinking, cross-cultural communication, and also English composition. So uh, before further ado, let's listen to the presentation from Professor Jennifer. After the presentation, we are going to have question and answer session. So you can ask, uh, you can ask, you can raise your hand and ask questions to Professor Jennifer, or if you prefer to write it on the chat room, then please do so. And I will make sure that I will read it for Professor Jennifer to answer. And also that, if you're not so comfortable, especially for students, even though I know your English are great, but if you're not comfortable speaking in English, or if you find difficulty, you can use both Indonesian and English, or you can use Indonesian language as well. Then uh, we are going to translate it for Professor Jennifer to answer. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Professor Jennifer, please. Um, okay, uh, good morning. Um, uh, it's a um, very honor to uh, accept this invitation to give the, the, such a lecture and speech for the professor and students in Diponagoro University. Uh, especially, I would like to thank the chair of the Department of English and also uh, the professor Delhi and the professor Naharyati. Um, because we have, a, a, um, I think, a very wonderful friendship and partnership between two departments and also uh, two universities. So uh, thank you for everything that uh, the, the arrangement, uh, invitation, and uh, all of these uh, sections. Okay, and especially also I uh, got to know Professor Etta and Hope in the future we can cooperate more. Okay, so I would like to just uh, start my uh, lecture today. And uh, of course, this is a part of uh, my research results. And uh, 
as you know, uh, I mainly focus on the topic of literature and art, and especially uh, I would like to do some uh, comparisons uh, between uh, different cultures and uh, different writers and artists. So I hope that, um, of course, the result can bring you some insight thinking and uh, um, maybe in the future, uh, the professor and the students in Indonesia can bring up uh, more issues related to uh, the female writer and artists uh, when they um, create their artworks and their writing. I would say that that's kind of like a treasure in the world and we should uh, put more efforts on uh, helping them to voice out, okay? Yeah, so that I will just uh, start to show uh, the PowerPoint of today of my lecture, so. Can, can you see the PowerPoint now? Yes, okay. Okay, so the title is about the life writing and displacement in Asian women's literature and art. So as you can see that I will focus on uh, how these Asian women to tell their life story and especially they are relocated or what we say is displaced in the different country. So it's uh, uh, the situation is kind of a uh, diaspora, okay? So the issue will be related to first one, the women in space. And I would like to apply the uh, theory from the Michel Foucault. Uh, he, he has a theory which, uh, um, he focused on the space and uh, it's uh, important that he mentions uh, heterogeneous space uh, because he said that under the discourse of heterotopology, um, a dialogue can be expanded. So the dialogue between the female uh, Taiwanese artists, writers who live on the island called Formosa, and anyway, it's Taiwan and the for the West, Westerners, they're also called Taiwan, this island as a Formosa, it means the beautiful island in Portuguese. And the other Asian women who are diasporic in the West, okay? So the discussion today will be presented to understand the image of Asian women's life writing, and uh, which is in order to make out the relationship of these women with their life experiences and uh, lens or the landscapes. And so the third point of uh, this research is uh, under the context of globalizations, uh, when international contexts are more frequent, everyone must uh, look back to find the local culture that is most beneficial to themselves and most convincing and most capable of highlighting their own unique levels. So we have uh, two questions raised here according to the research. The question one is, uh, well, these women uh, who are already marginalized, be likely to change or reshape themselves to another gender, to become another subject, uh, no matter is willingly or unwillingly, through a certain what we call the heterogeneous space, it means uh, their displacement, uh, they relocate in a different place. And the question too is, uh, will they intend to build a, a subject of another other uh, because they are treated as uh, the other uh, in a different country. And uh, the reconstruction of gender and further construct uh, dialogue with the life writings of Asia women. So uh, follow on these two questions and uh, there will be another uh, second main things in this research. That would be uh, the women and the storytelling because uh, they have to, uh, tell their life experience and the stories. So as we can compare is uh, the, the women writing about their story, it, it actually obviously uh, different than the male to the, the male writers or artists to 
to tell their life experience. So women, uh, therefore, should be encouraged to tell their stories. Uh, how do women tell story? And uh, that's the, the things we start to think about, to, to ponder. So it's, it's just a, a chatterbox of, of gossips. Uh, of course, that's kind of like stereotypes. And it's a piece of uh, discontinuity because most of people think that women cannot uh, organize well. I mean, it's also not a stereotype. So all is is a memoir of uh, the past. So once a woman uh, begins to tell stories, she cannot stop because such a story may come from intimate physical experience or care for the ecological environment or a desire for technology devices. And more likely it's, it's a missing of her mother's uh, handicraft, okay? Uh, it's kind of the, um, the, the, the woman wants to continue the inheritance from the mother's side to tell the story. So there's a kind of uh, a matriarchal inheritance which uh, drives the woman to tell the story. And it's like the piecemeal fabric that was ignored by most people, but it was stitched up at this time. And I would like to use the word stitch up. It's like a woman, uh, as we know, good at uh, sewing and then Use, uh, uh, she used the needle and string to, to stitch up to all the piece of the stories into uh, a, a, a female uh, narratives, okay? So for example, like uh, uh, Alice Walker in uh, her show story, Everyday Use, the fruit is laid out from the forgotten family affair. And then uh, each woman's uh, uh, but the reset, this is in French, it means a little story, okay, it's a woman. So from these small little stories, the woman came together or by individual to weave um, all this the small piece of story into a, 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 a narrations of her life uh, experience. So in this way, there is no woman who tells the story of a magnificent epic, because uh, uh, if you trace back to the history of the Western literature, uh, what we know is like a, a story about the hero, right? Uh, about the grand history. And uh, that's such the, the, the story we know is that kind of epic. But the story of a woman or women has a novel thing and a fascinating plot. So the characters being recited is like the stories. You is me and is her, okay? And it is a kind of the plural of you, us, and uh, them. Therefore, people who listen to the story will stop and uh, linger here and uh, will try to be quiet and uh, listen to what she say or what they say. And when women begin to tell stories, they are the plural, uh, little story, okay. They are too pluralistic. It means uh, they unite together to tell different little stories and uh, become the uh, great narrations and to be defined. And the story they tell are like the ties and the come and go, surge and receipts. Uh, they are up and downs, ups and downs. So uh, it, it will be a uh, a very uh, fascinating, uh, a wonderful life experience sharing. So the thing of life writing of Asian women is linked by their life stories and personal experience of diaspora and the relocation of their displacement as they are considered the others in which I have mentioned earlier. So from the various cultural activities and the phenomena that are in the ascendant in Taiwan, so the this discussion will focus on the following uh, genres. The first one is the literary text and uh, visual culture. And the second will be photography and uh, uh, documentary film. So uh, because uh, my major is com uh, comparative literature. So I would always like to uh, make a comparison between the literary text, the written words, and also uh, the visual arts. So, uh, Today, I would like to focus more on the visual arts because I think for this online speech, uh, 
more pictures or more videos to show what would maybe uh, 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 more attractive for uh, the audience, okay? And the discussion will center on uh, oriented uh, heterogeneous space and the women's transformation. So along with the possible implication of empowerment and the social practice, and that a uh, hope to summarize uh, how the representation of these uh, uh, alternative tests or our works can be produced or reproduced for Taiwan under the challenge of globalization. But of course, uh, if we draw back uh, to, to the main purpose of the research, uh, because I am now in, uh, living in Taiwan, so I care about the relationship between the, the uh, Taiwan and other countries. But uh, once uh, if you relocate in other different countries, you should also care about you know, what the issue happened or in your own country. So uh, the issue was not just uh, for Taiwan, but also for uh, Indonesia, uh, uh, the relation, uh, the female issues uh, related to uh, the other uh, women in other countries that would be uh, applied in the same way as well. And under the incentive of the heterogeneous space as the median, okay? So uh, the research uh, uh, of this uh, uh, lecture, uh, actually I divide into two parts. And the first part is the, my research results of uh, studying uh, Zarina Vinci's photography lab. And uh, Zarina Vinci is a photo female photographer. Um, she actually mainly focused on uh, her artwork in uh, diaspora landscape. So I would like to um, uh, share my uh, point of view of analysis, uh, uh, analysis of uh, her artwork. And I consider her also as a, a kind of uh, women poet. Uh, we can say it's a, uh, from her production, creation of uh, artwork. It's a women's poesis. So the introduction of uh, her background and her photography is as the uh, following. Uh, uh, Uganda born British Indian artist, Zarina Vinji is a photographer who transferred the uh, uh, canonical uh, meanings of landscape and uh, scrutinized the vision of diaspora reconstruction. And the photography series entitled Love provokes a sense of nostalgia and the loss which she, she captured in landscape when she returned to the country of her birth, uh, Uganda. Uh, she was born in Uganda, uh, but actually her parents are uh, from India and then the parents uh, immigrated to Uganda. But the problem is that uh, during the uh, civil war in Uganda, this family need to uh, immigrate again to uh, UK, okay? So uh, her identity kind of like sweet uh, among the three countries, India, Uganda, and the UK. So in addition, uh, Binji entitled each phot photograph with a name that symbolizes a, a verse of poetry. I think that's also the most important part is she combines the image and the, the, the poet. Uh, the poetry all together to reshape her um, story or her inner thought um, on her photograph. That's enhance, enhancing the complexity of her landscape photograph. This discussion, so will uh, prove the new dimension of these uh, diasporic uh, diasporic uh, landscape uh, depictions and the writing of poesis, uh, which means uh, women poetess. So uh, this is a, a short video clip to uh, help you to get to know uh, this photographer, Serena Vinci. Uh, let's uh, take a look for a few minutes. I'm Zarina Bimji, and uh, I am in my studio at the moment, and this is where I work. Is the sound okay for everyone? It took me a while to 
admit to myself that I'm an artist. When I made my first film, that's when I decided that I wanted to marry my work. That's what I decided. <laughs> This is my camera um, I use, uh, shooting transparency, and it's a medium format camera like this. I wouldn't be able to do any work. It's, it's my little baby. <laughs> it was really important to me to be technically independent because when I was a student, it was a territory that was not easily accessible, I felt until I've processed the film and looked at my film on my light box, that's when I think, oh, I always think I've got nothing in it. I th always think the trip's wasted. <laughs> and that's probably how I keep myself going. I can do some maps when I'm tired. <laughs> it's a lot more easier. At the end of the shoot, I sit on it because I think, thank God for that, we're finished. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you these shoes. I bought this when I was going to film in Africa. I thought these shoes might give me good luck. I thought that these shoes were really interesting because I was interested in the idea of evidence and the bottom of the shoes, if you took them under a microscope, perhaps you would discover a different form of questions, where it's walked, who it's met, what it did. This has been in my studio for a long time. I took this photograph when I first made my trip to India. I took this without knowing what I was doing. All I remember was he said to me, can you adopt me? Can I come to England? But this photograph has taught me a lot because of the way he's standing. His eyes, his buttonholes give off what I call like a puncture, a moment of emotion, but it's formal. And I think maybe that's what my work is about. Where is the emotion? Where is the physicality? When he said, take me with you, in a way, I have. This was worn by my mum when she, I think, met my dad the first time. It's, I think, very old in the family. It reminds me of a certain moment in time. It's a different sensibility to paint on canvas. It's not about the embroidery. It's about a certain kind of echo. The colour scheme in here is really interesting. And I think... Uh, When I grade my films, uh, it's been unconsciously, without knowing, hardly inspired by this sort of colouring. Oh, can I show you something that I have from my school days? Early school was a problem because I didn't speak English. Uh, I couldn't read and write. I ended up in care in a children's home. And that was, that was when I really realized that, you know, I need to um, get my act together here, if I can survive. And so I just worked and worked and worked. I remember my foster mother saying that you might not be able to go to university, but you can do something with your hands. And I thought, you know, Wow. <laughs> so I believed in that. I think that everybody should have equal access. I sort of worry that the culture comes from one place. I feel that uh, culture should be coming from all sorts of voices. And I think uh, when I'm feeling fed up of working, I remind myself why that is important. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so after seeing this uh, very short uh, video clip about Zarina uh, uh, Vinci herself talked about um, the uh, important things that she treasure a lot, especially during uh, her uh, the kind of uh, art creation uh, on shooting the uh, um, maybe films or photograph. And um, uh, I, when I do the research, I, I always like to know the background of the, the artist or the writer because uh, it's interesting that kind of you get into the inner world. So uh, this can frame, uh, uh, help us to frame kind of the a background to get uh, more understanding of uh, how uh, these artists uh, to demonstrate their artwork. Okay, so uh, I would like uh, to then uh, uh, continue uh, for this research for the part one is, uh, as we define uh, the, uh, the uh, landscape and it becomes a new meaning to uh, draw a connection uh, between landscape and new diaspora, okay? So we have to reconstruct the, the definition of uh, these uh, two terms, landscape and the diaspora. So because it's significant to uh, weave a storyline of personal narrative from these landscape artworks under the scope of new diaspora people who actually um, migrate or immigrate to a different country. So the visual seems to talk more than the written words, okay? So because showing the visual uh, artwork probably is easier than you just, you, you, you give these words uh, 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 writing down. It, it's because, um, for uh, these um, uh, immigrant women, they, they probably encounter difficulties of uh, new languages. So the visual words, I think, uh, is easier for them uh, to express their uh, meanings, uh, to express how they, they feel in the uh, new locations. So as the scholar uh, Spurns stated that, Landscape is allowed with language, with storylines that connect a place and its dweller. And landscape is not merely a picture of the natural world, but it delivers a message of attachment between humans and the place. Okay, so to connect the landscape with someone's belongingness, initiate the idea of a new landscape, especially in terms of identity. So uh, again, actually, the issue related to the new identity, how these. Uh, uh, women's uh, reshaped in, in uh, the new country. So in a sense, studying landscape brought up the issue of identity of diaspora for uh, those people who are scattered around the world. And the scholars continue with the following statement saying that uh, landscape has become increasingly utilized in a much broader poetic sense, okay, to signify a whole set of meaning and associations. The landscape of the mind, the landscape of fear, and the landscape of the loneliness. And the landscape is one of the components that exists in geography. And uh, as the landscape becomes a medium of art uh, to transcend the narratives of a diaspora, the landscape operates more uh, psyche consciousness uh, of subjectivities than it represents. So the part two, uh, uh, Actually, uh, it's uh, for the analysis. And the first one is, I would like to show the, some of uh, photos that uh, Vinji uh, captured the, the image of abandoned buildings. And uh, uh, there's uh, no one single human in, uh, in the, uh, uh, the, the photo. So, Abandoned buildings actually itself stand as a storytellers, okay? So in uh, her uh, photograph, uh, she intended to mingle different elements to explore the uh, valuability of a poetic sense of the diaspora. So landscape and building are seen to be haunted by their aging and grooming appearances. And uh, Vinci also focuses accurately on the environments and material uh, a sensationalist and the interaction uh, with the subtle effects of light and wind. And the artist is drawn to all the bu uh, abandoned buildings, frail textiles, spiderweb uh, as such. 
And uh, here the building perform, the buildings perform as uh, characters, uh, uh, thematizing uh, Vinci's relationship with her parents' homeland. Uh, uh, because the place uh, he uh, produced this uh, series of photographs uh, in Uganda. So as the first uh, picture show here in title spider score, uh, within this barren isolated landscape, we are only left with the traces and remains. As a viewer, we begin to question, so what has happened here before, okay? And the second one uh, entitled, your sadness is drunk. Uh, so we can see that the monographic building will lead the viewers into a world of silence, a speechless a space where there are isolated human dwellings. So we, we can see these uh, abandoned buildings, but not even a one single human being. And it, it, it seems that they, they stand there silently to tell their own stories. So the analysis of all these parts, uh, first one is the, uh, the landscape building as Benji depicted, uh, coincidentally reflect her inner feeling of fear and the loneliness of being both insider and outsider in the history of uh, this uh, migration experience. And through a glimpse of these steel works of landscape, the dark shadow and the decaying interior seem to murmur, the passage of time carrying out the memory. So it also uh, kind of uh, um, delivered a message and a feeling that about the time and then the memory, okay? So the process of keep, keeping time frozen in the frame reveals the forgotten memories. So it's, it, 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 the, the, the feeling is like the time seems uh, frozen at that moment and they carry us back to um, the history of uh, her memory of her birthplace. And the third one uh, entitled Papa Cross uh, Her Heart and it was over, okay? So as you can see the dim light or shadow uh, showers into the interior of the building and uh, presents a sense of timing moment. And we can see an airplane waiting outside and the least might refer to or remind the memory of uh, deportation under the order to leave Uganda because they are forced to leave the country. Actually, uh, they, they wanted to settle there. And uh, the next one entitled Cracky Earth, uh, on, uh, on this photo, we can see that the things, uh, the uh, properties are left at the corner of the building. Uh, and uh, inferring that the sojourn of a passenger or traveler carrying only uh, minimal necessities, okay? So it's kind of like uh, nothing really left there, okay? There's no settlement or a sense of belonging that can be found in this landscape. And the next one uh, entitled, My Heart Was Beating Widely, uh, the audience can see an interior of the building is haunted by a decaying wall, uh, which stimulates the, the sense of discomfort and the objection. The wide beating heart is likely to correspond with the a scenery of this ghost-like interior. And it stands as a storyteller to speak out of the memorial history of no return. The next uh, type uh, the photo uh, entitled Shadow and the Disturbances. Uh, it's a pair of decay uh, window shutters are framed by ongoing plaster work, revealing the once upon a time glamour and the splendor, okay? And the glam, uh, the glorious past of the uh, canonized uh, era becomes a part of nostalgia uh, to be memorized and uh, pondered. So the shattering plaster wall implies the decaying luxuries and the memories in opposition with the poignant political conflict. Okay, so it's kind of like uh, uh, the, the, the just a position of the uh, glamour past and the current conflict. Okay, a continued analysis of this part. Uh, for example, the scholar comics state that as a willingly ambiguous uh, epilogue, the scene seems to enforce the primacy and the persistence of the 
uh, present inside to saturate with history and a painful memory. Okay, so uh, I think we need to try to uh, connect the history and painful memory back to together. And these are the objects of a political or personal past. And the Vinci transforms them into the narratives of representations, which makes the collective trauma uh, be voiced and uh, heal. And uh, also we can see in uh, this series of uh, photographs, we should understand that and landscape. It's described as a turn uh, to represent the experience of the feelings, the emotions, and the sensations which uh, uh, collocate with the uh, encounters, context, conflict, and the texture of historical narratives. And moreover, uh, within the context of the photograph, it demonstrates that cultural identity is not fixed or rooted, be constructed through memory, fantasy, narrative, and the myth. So, which means uh, it, once you want to ident identify yourself, the cultural identity uh, is not really always uh, stable or be fixed or looted as uh, most of people think, because you can uh, reconstruct your identity through your memory, your fantasy and narrative, and of course, uh, other possible detail related to your personal experience. Okay, and the, the next part is I would like to research focus on uh, the language usage, uh, connect with the, the, the image present uh, in the, her photos. So uh, these photos, especially also she entitled some, um, uh, we can say the words or sentence in a poetic way. It's a, a bring us a more uh, a broader a poetic sense when we, uh, appreciate uh, her artwork. And as uh, the scholar you uh, state that, it's no longer a landscape that is being depicted and uh, represented, but the Maya is being represented as landscape, okay? So the Maya actually reflected to the landscape, or perhaps we can say the landscape has become the mind. And the poetic identity is demonstrated in the works of the photograph, which uh, Minji portrays and also the words or phrases or sentences that uh, title each uh, photos. And Vinci explores the issue of uh, colonialism, slavery, uh, um, uh, migration, identity, and human history. So in this large scale, she jumps from the creation of the picture landscape to the game of uh, languages. So uh, continue to uh, her uh, photos. This one entitled, uh, this uh, unhinge her. We can see that chandeliers are abandoned and pulled down at the corner of the house and the entangled electric wire. Okay. Remind us that it might be a place without electricity. Okay. And the toned down uh, chandeliers imply a destruction of a uh, house and family. Okay. Again, the poetic title referred and unveiled psychological fear due to the change of the outer environment. The next one, uh, photo uh, entitled No Border Closing. Uh, we can see that piles of paper, okay, documents are discarded in the corner of the wall. Documents are, are tied in bundles uh, of packs and the label with red tape, okay? And as we remember the history of migration in Vinji's family, Migrants were asked to fill out endless forms and application documents. And that's photo entitled as asphalt. Uh, we can see that a tank of asphalt, okay, is put at the corner of the house with a few boots hanging on the wall. In this glimpse of indoors, there is a pose. Okay, a moment of silence without people. And who are the owners of these boots? And did the owner just finish a job with the ash fall? Okay, so the image left us uh, some stories to ponder. 
The next one, the photo entitled Illegal Sleep, uh, it transmits an unforeseen violence because we can see a lot of guns, right? In the memory, which uh, continues to interrupt the temporary uh, tranquility of the pre uh, present. Guns are put uh, against in a row uh, in a row against the wall as if they are uh, resting for a moment. And while there uh, might be a call to fight, uh, we are wondering, or a call to war nest. So the title illegal sleep portrays the hidden activities considered as illegal. And the sleep of guns ironically captures the moment of peace. So for these uh, few pictures that uh, comes to the, some uh, analysis here, it's obviously that the poetic titles of these uh, photographs uh, deliver a message of destruction, uh, fruitity, uh, displacement, and disruption, which is, uh, we call it a limbo zone, demonstrating the spirit of uh, difference that illustrated uh, as a, uh, the Hita's analysis of uh, uh, it as an interval that makes signification possible by differentiation the presents from what it is not, okay? So it's kind of like a, 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 a split or kind of a, a separation from uh, us to the reality uh, and the, the past. So therefore the poet entitles are correspond with the vision of the photograph and they will generate spatial multiplicity and the language uh, plurality into the frame of a societal and a cultural context, which explains Vinci to be a poetess, meaning a, a, a woman poet, a woman uh, producer, okay? And creating a story not only for uh, her family, but also for the collective memories of her time. And, uh, as the conclusion here, we can draw two is uh, the landscape that reflects uh, our inner self identity. So the landscape has been portrayed as the supremacy of the imagination in the history of Western art. And why Minji is trying to demonstrate a feeling of a despair, vacancy, loneliness, and uh, the isolation inside human beings psychological fear by refining the meaning of the aspiric landscape. And the artist also, uh, her exploration of landscape and the narration of texts or stories can span uh, to uh, the positive perspective toward the study of a new diaspora in, uh, in our everyday life. So Minji is fond of studying the archeology span and she uh, re-articulates a historical archive with uh, post-colonial uh, testimony and pointing to the traumatic legacy of uh, colonial uh, uh, domination and uh, subsequent migration, as the uh, scholar Korea uh, stated. And in the world, the landscape shaped a possible topological approach. So it means uh, uh, from the vision, from uh, things that we made out by the picture uh, to study the new diaspora. And the Vinci is one of the prominent artists to demonstrate that through the representation of voice, fragment objects, and the limbs of a landscape with the technologies of texture. As you can see that uh, when, when you uh, see a woman to hold a camera, it seems like a, a she is with empowerment, you know, the camera, this device becomes uh, 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 empowered, uh, diverse uh, to give her the authority, okay, the right to voice out uh, her stories. And so uh, the sound and the light uh, from her uh, photos can elevate the significance of a new aspect of the interrelationship between the diaspora and the landscape. Okay, so this will be uh, kind of uh, end of uh, the first part of um, my research result. And continue, uh, okay, I have to speed up, right? So <laughs> focus on uh, the new immigrant uh, women in Taiwan, uh, how they write 
their life story uh, from different narrative styles, okay? So uh, the background here is I'm interested in explore uh, more issues about the female uh, life writings. And then I uh, switch my focus on the current issues in Taiwan. So as I uh, found out that since 1980s, the marriage pattern in Taiwan has had a huge change for a large uh, number of female immigrants, both from Southeast Asia and mainland China, started to immigrate to Taiwan. And it's called a, situ a situation phenomena, marriage and migration. Okay. And as this uh, the chart showed that foreign spouse from the Southeast Asia are over uh, 100,000 in Taiwan. And uh, sorry that the chart uh, in, uh, is in Chinese, but here the second bar actually shows the, the foreign spouse from Indonesia. And as if you counted the number, uh, right now, of course, it's more than uh, uh, 33,000. I think it could be more right now. And the, the, my research concern with the, uh, as a, a female immigrant spouse's homeland, cultures and uh, family identities we are seldom discussed. So this is an issue we should you know, uh, uh, focus on. But, uh, however, it's still, uh, it's still the recent years that the story of these female immigrants were fully uh, presented or be represented by means of various narratives. So for instance, I mean, uh, like films, photos, and the contest uh, exquisitely depict conflicts between female immigrants and their cross-cultural uh, marriage of families, children, and even their families of origin, okay? So uh, the research found out that, and also critical rights, uh, there are three kinds of narratives in immigrants' writing. The first one is a, a oral confessional narrative, and the second is textual narrative, and the third is documentary films. Okay, the first one uh, for the oral confessional narratives uh, were based on the female immigrants' description orally with their own language and then being translated into Chinese because uh, they encounter uh, learning the new languages. So there should be uh, some middle person to help them uh, to write their, write down their story. So what they can do probably they, they can uh, speak uh, Chinese uh, fluently but they only can write with simple Chinese, okay? So uh, in this case, a Taiwanese female artist, Lulu Ho, play as a medium in depicting several female immigrant spouse by means of the first person monologue in her three episodes uh, entitled, Look Toward the Other Side, Song of Asia Foreign Brides in Taiwan. in 2005 and 2009. Okay? So these episodes are brought into the question of spouse's self-identity, who is living in uh, an exotic place. So uh, the short video uh, will uh, let you know that from the interview of these artists, uh, the audience uh, can see the exhibition of her artworks is in the face of these foreign spouses because the the size of the photo seems to be facing the audience in a dialogue. The photo is, uh, is, uh, is enlarged in a, 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 a quite huge uh, size. And it means uh, force our audience to start to initiate our dialogue with uh, this foreign spouse. And the dialogue which seems to be able to read their inner confession, okay? And through the image to show the presence of a foreign spouse, as well as Taiwan, Vietnam intrigued uh, marital uh, relationship, okay? So they are the people to really record it, but they can share uh, the experience of others. And meanwhile, they also see a lot of people in Taiwan are concerned about them, which is very important. Uh, there are still people in Taiwan which concern their situation, how they lived in this uh, uh, foreign country, but as their second country because uh, they have already a new family here. So let's take a quick look of this video about uh, uh, the artist's interview. Uh, the interview in Chinese, but uh, we can uh, take a glimpse of the, the space of exhibition and the, the photos. 
And her photo actually, each、uh, wall just top position to pictures. So this is space of the exhibition in the museum. Ah, through this photo, these are photos. And even she built a a house. In the exhibition, and the audience get into the house and、uh, see these photos of foreign brides. It seems like they can start their dialogue. And also, the artist back to the foreign brides、uh, homeland.、Uh, here is in Vietnam. He has a very large vision. Produce the interview between、uh, her family of origin, and these are our、uh, foreign brides. And the foreign brides,、uh, they, they are. Talking about、uh, her feeling of、uh, marriage, and also her parents are、uh, talking about how they feel about their daughter's marriage. And this、uh, is the scene、uh, when、uh, the artist back to this foreign brides、uh, country, Vietnam, to do some interview. 他们看到这个展览，应该都有蛮多的感想，就是说他们自己是被拍的人，他们也分享了别人的经验啊，然后也看到就是说，其实台湾有很多人是关心他们，我想这个还蛮重要。To raise the concern of、uh, Taiwanese people, so this is an important issue. Okay, so the main thing here, as you can see, through through the situational and the care of the exhibition design and storyline to the th the home as the main thing, showing a foreign bride. Okay, now lives in the south of Taiwan.、Uh, it's a Pindong County, but、uh, most of them are from Vietnam. And in the two male uh, family members, uh, husband and the father. Her、husband is from Taiwan.、Uh, her father is from Vietnam, right? The pain and the pressure of、uh, the family, and、uh, so that the people can read a story from real family fragments of the moment. And artists put together a collective but different Asian and female life experience. So the analysis of、uh, this series of our work,、uh, we can say that、uh, due to the limited、uh, language ability, the new immigrant women. Could not speak fluently in telling their stories in Chinese. So Taiwan female artist、uh, Lulu hosts series of works、uh, presenting in the way of spokesperson. So she's kind of representative of these foreign brides, and the artist is for the immigrant women with the view of、uh, a seven Vietnamese brides and their Vietnamese native family image by first person monologue. Escaping、uh, the、uh, socialization of the foreign brides label, other, and、uh, reconstructing the identity of their new life. So through the self consciousness and the uh, cognition, uh, the artist try to show the cultural and the class differences in the image of Taiwan and Vietnamese marriage. Okay. And、uh, more analysis here is as.、Uh, Uh, the other scholar Huang、uh, pointed that、uh, these immigrant women leave their fathers,、uh, their families, their nations of the home country,、uh, which is Vietnam, and re-establish or re-establish the new husband, new homes, and、uh, new nations, which is、uh, Taiwan. And the new homes they contribute to the own,、uh, the use and the labor. So their flesh is a tool of reproduction and production. But generally speaking, Taiwan society still has、uh, great discrimination against them. I mean,、uh, maybe、uh, slowly, gradually, it becomes better. But、uh, there are still some gap or some obstacle we need to 
break through. And we not only reject them, but also reject the culture of our children's mother because uh, their children is also we call the new Taiwanese, okay? And more analysis here in such a predicament and the artist uh, from the feminist point of view consider herself as a woman who is a denial of husband, home, nation. Realizing these immigrant women are struggling dealing with different cultures in Taiwan. So the artist was gradually aware of the difference of cultural and class nature. And uh, uh, the scholar Huang stated again that Ho is uh, uh, taking a complaint or critical statement, but to show some real scattered realistic fragment to stabilize the panic and the fear in the new environment of these immigrant women. So she regards her uh, photograph can gradually help these foreign brides adapt to the outside circumstance and expect the public to build a mutual understanding and uh, compassion. So as we can see uh, some artwork from uh, the artist Lulu Ho, uh, I just mentioned earlier, she uh, just positioned two photos. The uh, on the left side is the original one. On the right side, uh, she made the, the photo kind of like a black and white and also typed on uh, the narration from the foreign price uh, discussion or life story. Uh, for example, in this, uh, uh, our work, uh, we can see that it's a story about like a um, mother and daughter relationship, okay? And again, uh, the same uh, narrative style. And as for the mother and daughter's relationship, uh, pass on to the next generation. And because uh, she already has kids in Taiwan, okay? So the story continues. And or uh, some artwork showed that the foreign price in the self confection. So on the right side of the, the pictures, uh, it's a kind of uh, the discussion or confession from uh, this uh, foreign bride from Vietnam. Okay, so uh, as we can see that uh, uh, the artist Lulu Ho spent six years shooting uh, seven new immigrants from Vietnam. So they live a little bit hoping to take a simple realistic family photo so that people from different angles uh, can uh, re understand the new Taiwanese residents. Okay. So, at the end of the uh, first part of uh, uh, narrat narrative style and continue to the second is the textual narrative. Um, the textual narrative tends to focus on the mother-daughter relationship and my research uh, object is uh, uh, the writer Pepe Wu, uh, her collection of three short stories in her book, her sto storybook uh, novel, Moving Skirts. Um, that's uh, my uh, research object. And in the book, uh, it illustrates uh, the mother figures with many uh, uh, aphasia and, and also absence from home, okay? So the mother always uh, has a very, uh, the, the character of personality with complexity. And all mothers are silent with our voices. So the, the stories uh, collects uh, these conflict and compromise of mother and daughter relationship. So this is about the second part of textual narration. And uh, for this part, I will not uh, focus too much. Then I would like to move to the uh, newly developed uh, narratives uh, for, for the, uh, these uh, uh, female uh, story experience writing. Uh, it's the, sec uh, the third part of documentary films and the song uh, creation. So in the documentary films, uh, there are two out marriage and let's not be afraid. Display that the women not only pay, uh, play as uh, mothers, wives, daughter-in-laws, but as uh, defenders to protect their rights. So um, those foreign brides who are from especially uh, Southeast Asia and uh, they organize an association which called Trans Asia Sisters Association Taiwan, uh, TASAT, okay? And in these organizations, uh, they 
they have a lot of uh, productions, for example, the documentary films and the song uh, production. So in our marriage, uh, in the film, you can see four foreign spouses in Taiwan went through the broken marriage. They each face a different family situation and finally embark on a, a voluntary and a involuntary divorce. So the three main uh, characters in the film, um, uh, uh, Mangoria, uh, Golden Bell, a point, uh, like all the new immigrant sisters, once embraced the dream of pursuing happiness to Taiwan, but cannot do so. But their life in Taiwan will not be ending, even the end of marriage. How do they choose the next step in life? And uh, what are education they can offer for their children who are born in Taiwan? What kind of life and education problem will the children face after the broke out of their parents' transnational marriages. So these are the issues and the difficulties that we would like to figure out, uh, especially uh, the, the recording uh, of this documentary film. So let's take a, a few, uh, two minutes of uh, this uh, documentary films. And the scene started from Vietnam because uh, the director is also a, a foreign bride from Vietnam and she herself went back to her hometown and helped those uh, what they call sisters to record the, the, the story. And she's one of uh, the foreign brides who went through the broken marriage in Taiwan. And she went back to Vietnam. But she has, she has a, a daughter in Taiwan. Oh, a son. But then she, she went back to Vietnam to raise her son. So she has to face the difficulty of educate her son. In Vietnam, it seems like the, the son cannot have uh, education of, uh, for example, the, the language in Taiwan or, or the, the educational system in Taiwan. So uh, she, she is the director of this documentary film. And this is the second story of the foreign bride in her film. And uh, this foreign bride has a daughter. So she also took daughter back to the The daughter at the beginning, she can speak uh, Chinese well. But the problem is, uh, if the daughter continue to stay in the land, she probably forgets the language in Taiwan, Chinese, and she will probably uh, be educated in the land. So these are the difficulties of these foreign rights. But thanks to the broken marriage, she really doesn't want to get back to Taiwan. She wants to stay with her parents in Vietnam. Okay, so these are the interview and uh, a kind of recording of uh, how these foreign brides like now and uh, the difficulties uh, they have to carry on. Okay, so I will just show a few uh, minutes of this uh, documentary film. And uh, uh, back to the uh, director of uh, this documentary film, uh, Ran Jing Hong is a new immigrant from Vietnam herself. In 2009, began to become a documentary director. So through her divorce, also she divorced, but she remarried again. She's brave to tell the story of other sister uh, with the lens with her camera. And her documentary, Our Marriage, uh, finalist at 2013 Taipei Film Festival and the 
the South Film Festival Best Documentary, okay? And she won the Southern Film Festival, uh, Southern Newcomer Award in 2014, and the new Lovely Stranger, and won the Golden uh, Year Award uh, because she continued to produce uh, more uh, documentary films about uh, these uh, uh, foreign spouse uh, story. Okay, so one million of uh, this uh, uh, director. She would like to capture a lot of local people's image and to tell them story. Even she went to a flow stand and had the owner who is handicapped to record his story. Okay, okay. So this is about the director. And okay, the next one is let's not be afraid uh, because all the sisters, I mean, those are foreign uh, brides, and then they are willing to confront to challenge the exclusion of laws and regulation and the fight for identity and rights. But how can they stand out to fight for the law and regulation of the new immigrant sister who do not want others to call them foreign brides? Sorry, I still use the term. Actually, I should use like foreign spouses, okay? They are learning new languages, education, their children and uh, taking care of their families. So how do they evolve from a silent group to an immigrant movement? So this is a recording about their, their movement to fight for their right. One minute. So the sky Latin, uh, symbolize a kind of a hope, a dream, that wish to come true. And this is their social movements. They went on the street and uh, fight for their rights. It means uh, they came here uh, to marry a Taiwanese man. Doesn't mean that they are just uh, the belonging of uh, this man or his family. Yeah. Okay, so they went on the street and they to have some demonstrations. <laughs> and help the also Chinese people to understand their difficulties, their predicament. Yeah. Okay, so this is their action drama uh, on the street. Okay, so uh, another one continue. Uh, it's a, not just a documentary film, and they also want to combine their creations about uh, the new songs they, they produce uh, and probably in their own native mother language or combine their language with uh, uh, Chinese, okay? So this is a song uh, which in uh, uh, Cambodian language, Khmer, and uh, means, uh, uh, Taken. And actually, the pronounce is very similar with the Taiwanese living, very similar. So it kind of like becomes a poem with a double meaning. So because in Chinese, like loot it, but in Cambodian uh, language, it's like a, a loot it, a, a living. Okay, so living, loot it, uh, it's a kind of a, a double meaning and symbols here. So let's take a look for this video uh, in the uh, Cambodian uh, uh, camera language. Which actually this is my favorite video, you know, because it's very poetic and with a lot of uh, sentences and inner feeling. We can quickly take a look for one minute.
jajani pisau kemal jadi solan Mangkai tak tahu tahu kemir koda kandang kandai kekhan hau asikan kikip sukar kropsa Okay, so what's this song uh, uh, the the point about? Let's take quick read, uh, read about the uh, the sentence. Uh, which means departure, okay? And uh, I left the hometown I love, feeling empty and unreal. I have uh, nowhere to go, feeling pain, lonely and helpless. Birth of pressure caused me suffocation pain. My hometown evokes a search for what I have lost. The uncertain self is about to fall. I'm anchored and rooted on this island, searching for a path that suits mean. No identity papers can be found in the naked flesh and blood. All I bear is a sea and myself. Okay, so several uh, the same sentence continue. So this is about the poems and combined with the, the image and the visions of the documentary film. And the last one is, of course, uh, follow on the sorrow and the sense and the, uh, the loss of the uh, identities of the belongings. Um, these sisters, these foreign brides suddenly uh, realize that Taiwan is also uh, their second homeland now, their, their new country. So they have to form the new identity. And that's why they try to think again in different thoughts. Why not they combine these two countries' advantage all together? They should enjoy the life here. So. Uh, they uh, try to offer a new perspective and a new hope of dream in this island, in this country, especially with their new generation, their kids. And uh, the song here is quite interesting. Uh, they come by the Thailand famous song, Water Lamb Song, okay? Loi Guang Tong and describe the, the organization sisters will be like sister in Taiwan. They meet here, love each other, provide mutual supports. And the songs express that the sister will be close to each other, brought together here and strive together. So it means uh, kind of like the, um, uh, uh, what the scholar uh, Anderson Benedict saying that uh, it, it should be a, a, a imagined community they, the sisters, the females from all the different country or community should work together, should unite together to uh, voice out themselves. So that's, uh, uh, take a look and listen to this song for one minute. So the song says to uh, express the feeling that how, how the sister can uh, unite together. And the first part is in Chinese and then comes in Thai language. Okay, 
So uh, this will be the end of the, my lecture. And of course, we are uh, continue to do more research and uh, explore the issues related to this part. So, Talamakashi. Okay, thank you. And uh, we can continue the next section of discussion and uh, question and answer. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Jennifer. It's a very rich presentation and it covers a lot. So yeah, let's start with a question and answer session. So if you would like to ask your questions directly to Professor Jennifer, you can raise your hand um, and you can just ask your questions here or put your question on the chat room and I'll read it for you for Professor Jennifer to answer. So yes, please, would anyone would like to ask questions? I have not seen any questions in the chat. So probably if anyone would like to ask questions directly, Okay, while waiting for the questions from uh, our participants, uh, Professor Jennifer, it's it's interesting. I'm studying literature, but it's more of written text. But what you're talking today is about photography and also documentary songs. It's um, it's probably kind of easier to understand when it comes to documentary and also songs because it has text in it but about photograph, um, could you explain to us, because we rely only on the pictures. If there's no titles, for example, how can the messages get across? Yeah, yeah. I think um, most audience has this kind of difficulty to mm -hmm. understand uh, the photos, right? If only, mm -hmm provided by the vision and the images, yeah. Uh, but the I think the best thing to understand uh, what, you, what you see uh, from the photo is you have to give yourself a few minutes, some moments to pose on the picture, to scrutinize all the details. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just a glimpse of a, 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 a image. So if you pose yourself uh, in front of this uh, picture for a few minutes, uh, you can search for detail like uh, the color, okay? And uh, the organization of uh, these uh, objects in the pictures, okay? And uh, what are the details? in the picture and uh, are there only objects or with people? Are there animals or are there some uh, uh, zoom in image? Um, this question you have to raise by yourself and then you can go further to uh, kind of uh, dig into your feeling toward this vision uh, mm -hmm. and the image. For example, when you see these abandoned buildings, so what will you feel? What what the inside feeling you you come across? So that's the important thing. And and most people people I think we have the common sense. You feel not really not comfortable, and you feel very discontinuity. You feel kind of something miss missing or something you, you cannot see in the picture. So I think uh, the uh, photographer uh, actually tried to deliver this kind of uh, image through um, just image, just vision, but not a written word, not a written text. Yeah, so that's the first thing I think the audience can do. And the second, for in order to know more the meaning from uh, the pictures, and uh, most of the reader, the, the audience will try to get to know, uh, dig into the background of the artist, right? 
And, and that's the, we start to have the connection uh, with the, 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 the text and the, the author and then our analysis, yeah, our feeling. I think it's a kind of like a process, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. Um, and also when, for these pictures, uh, you mentioned that it's, it's about diaspora, that Benji is uh, British Indian, but she was born in Uganda. Yeah. And so the pictures are, the pictures were taken in Uganda. But again, since in, it seems that the landscape, it's more like all of ruins. So in your research, did you also research why she's interested in the ruins instead of different kinds of landscape? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that uh, because uh, uh, if you, uh, the, in, in, the, in the history of Uganda in 1970 and uh, um, there's a civil war during the country, right? And then, uh, in a way, uh, these photographs of parents are immigrants in Uganda, right? And uh, as for the immigrants, they face the same situations. The government of Uganda at that time, they don't consider they are real nation, uh, you know, the residents, uh, the nationalists in in this country, so mm -hmm. so the government forced them out, you know, took over all the property of these immigrants from India or maybe from other countries. So mm -hmm. uh, saying that uh, you, you actually don't belong to this country, so you have to move. And in this case, uh, Vinji and her parents need to move again to immigrate again. But uh, in a sense, Uganda is her birthplace, is her homeland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she was forced out, okay? So it's kind of like a sense of uh, loss of uh, your, your origins, your, home, your, your homeland, your, your identity, okay? And uh, plus, um, Mm, it's during the war zone, it's a civil war time. So mm -hmm. in her image, especially when she was uh, a child, she was not allowed to go out because it was too dangerous. And what she can do is just stay at home. So mm -hmm. uh, in, in her you know, visions, what she can see at a time, uh, it's just uh, the, the destruction of the building, destruction of uh, the landscape of uh, her surroundings. So I think um, more or less the photographs, he, he delivered the image of uh, her memory, the past, and also connected to the history of uh, the country of uh, Uganda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's why uh, the story uh, she want to, to, to talk about, uh, to share her life experience. And uh, uh, using the camera by this kind of uh, uh, technological devices to, to tell a story. Uh, of course, it would be uh, different than we read a story uh, in words as a novel or the biography. Right, so it's it's interesting actually that she was born in Uganda and then as an adult she went back to Uganda. Yeah. If it's related to the your second presentation, there are children uh, who were born in Taiwan, but then because of well complicated mm -hmm. situation, then their mother took them to the other countries, and it's like they are uprooted from yes. um, their identity. Um, yeah, we can continue talking about that, but there's a question here uh, from Pa Adianto. What do you think of Indonesian women's life literature if it is compared to other Asian literature? Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, sorry, I didn't, uh, I don't have time to uh, post. Uh, actually, it's a research uh, from the graduate student of uh, master program in my department, and mm -hmm. she's a student from Indonesia. 
and uh, uh, she uh, focused on the study of uh, kind of um, the female issues in Indonesian literature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the movies. So in the novel, in the movie, uh, I think um, I can understand that the story would always related to like kind of domestic violence. And mm. uh, yeah, uh, the difficulties as uh, a female in a traditional society. Yeah, and uh, how difficult to be as a wife and mothers um, with a lot of um, kind of, kind of uh, uh, um, regulation or role enforcement uh, to the female. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the stories, but um, mm -hmm. I think uh, there should be more women, but of course I, I feel not, we, we cannot just limit it to just women. If mm -hmm. there are also male writers that would like to write a story of uh, females, that's of course right. much welcome, right? Okay, mm -hmm. it's just because the female, of course, they understand more about their situations. And uh, if they are capable to, uh, you know, to voice out their own voices, it's, it's of course more fascinating. Yeah. Right, because different life experience can, it's different between men and women. Um, okay, so I have a uh, Harkiman here who would like to ask, Questions, please, Harkiman. Yes, thank you. Um, can can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, uh, thank you very much. This is this is a very interesting uh, presentation, and um, the fact that you're comparing uh, women's um, literary texts and and and, and um, uh, photographs and so on. It makes it uh, quite an interesting uh, uh, thing altogether. But I, when I was listening to you earlier, I, I was thinking uh, whether or not um, women, Asian women in this case, Asian women's uh, stories, uh, uh, there is really a sense of uniformity, meaning uh, right across uh, Asia. And if there is a sense of uniformity, can you really think of it as a, let's say as an Asian women's phenomenon. That's, that's question number one, but I, I have another question to go with that. And, and how would you compare the stories of Asian women with, let's say with uh, Western women? I mean, is there really uh, something interesting, if not difference, and is, is there something really um, um, phenomenal about how the two uh, uh, parts of the world uh, compare as far as women's uh, self-expressions and uh, things are concerned. Is, is, is that something you can understand? Or... I, uh, yeah, I think I, I can okay. grab uh, the, yes. the main idea yeah, of your yeah, I, I, I would appreciate it if you could uh, give, give us some feedback. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you. For, for the question, yeah. Yeah, thank you for argument. Yes, please, okay. uh, Professor Jennifer. So okay, the I'll, first question uh, is about uniformity of Asian women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, follow, I saw, um, because of course we back to our own positions. I, my research also can focus on like a, a more Western women uh, text or literature. And of course also I was doing that because our major is, uh, you know, uh, English department, yeah, at, mm -hmm. at, at the beginning, yeah. So mm -hmm. what we know, of course, we started from uh, reading uh, uh, those uh, Western women's uh, texts and their writing, right? Okay. Um, but then, uh, if uh, uh, the students or the professors they they have uh, studied the the process of the movement of feminism, and and it will correspond to uh, the writings of uh, the development of uh, Western feminism and uh, combined with the, the, the literature and the art, right? So um, there's a process and that's been like a few decades to go, to go till now. 
and the development is uh, still continue. But uh, in the West, I believe that the female writings and their expressions, they have their different, uh, different developments and the more mature and the different strategies to uh, kind of restore uh, their right and the, their feelings or their life experience sharing, okay? So if you, then you come back to uh, the different area of females, for example, like uh, uh, in uh, Asia or the Afri Africa, uh, these women who lived especially in what we call is the developing countries, and they face the different difficulties. And especially under what I mentioned, the situation of globalizations, the mobility uh, is more than before. So uh, the issues that they, they, they have to uh, face and the, the challenge they have to conquer uh, is more than uh, um, the, the women in the West, the, as I can, I, under, I can understand uh, during my research. So the informality, I, I feel that uh, I, just like what I have mentioned that um, different uh, country in Asia, uh, I mean, the females in different countries in Asia, they of course face the different issues in their daily life, but they are still uh, many similar uh, uh, lifestyle or diff many similar uh, uh, challenges they can share with in their daily life. For example, being a mother, a daughter, you know, a sister-in-law, okay. Uh, these are the positions. These are the everyday life surrounding them. So uh, I'm thinking that the, the informality would be um, they can uh, join together to share what they, their story again. So that's why back to the, the, their life writings. And then they can use uh, uh, any methods, any uh, different way to express their feelings. So uh, most of women, they probably conquer the problem of like language, you know, especially to write. So that's why I especially appreciate the people can help them to record a story or they can use a new method, a new devices from the technology to tell their life experience. I think that's also uh, a, a new era of studying uh, Asian women literature and art. Yeah, mm. because we have the new way to to know, uh, to understand their expressions, um, mm. uh, technology devices. Okay, so that that's my part of feedback. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Professor Chen, I um, you know, I'm, I I do not specialize in women's literature, but uh, I think um, it's it's quite obvious that when, as far as women's uh, literature, be it uh, um, um, Eastern women or um, women's literature in general uh, is concerned, there seems to be. I mean, I don't know if this is. A, 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 this sense of uh, uh, uniformity that I was ask, asking you earlier, but it seems like they all seem to be speaking about um, uh, being victims, being um, marginalized in mm -hmm. the world's uh, patriarchal <laughs> uh, culture and civilization. I don't know if, I don't know, I'm, I'm just thinking aloud, but it would be nice to see more stories about women's uh, uh, successes, women's, um, you know, and, and, and all that. What, 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 what do you think about this? If I may uh, ask you another laser question. Thank you. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. of course, it's interesting that like, uh, people will always say, so the women are all victims. They, there's no successful women's story to share with. But of course they are, because uh, for example, uh, there are stories like uh, talk about a women's uh, leadership, right? Uh, so we talk about uh, and not just be leadership, be a successful mother or you know the daughter or some professionals. Yeah, I, I believe there are. Yeah, so uh, it's just because uh, 
uh, back to the literature. I mean, it's like uh, in, <laughs> in the history of the, 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 the Greek, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gr Greece uh, philosophy. Um, they think the tragedy is the best literature in the world. <laughs> so when we went back to that, then we were thinking that uh, what kind of story will you know raise your compassion, or you you feel like uh, more attached uh, to the story? Probably is a, a tragedy, you know, because <laughs> it's kind of like a uh, you can clean your inner self to ponder more. Uh, questions and uh, to share the same feeling or the compassion to those uh, vulnerable, you know. So that's why most story of the women related to like the, the victims and the, the petition to be uh, marginalized. And, and that's also probably, uh, you are right, it's a kind of like a special aspect to to read the literature or the art of uh, the mm. women's story, because as I have mentioned earlier, um, in the history of uh, the storytelling, uh, men are more likely uh, be be a hero, and what we what we learn from their stories, uh, magnificent epic, right? Yeah, and uh, mm. combined with great history. Yeah. So mm. what I mean mm. is that the women. Uh, we cannot say uh, they are not great enough. It's just because probably uh, since they were born, they, they are kind of limited to their daily life. So what I am collecting their stories start from their everyday life story. So that's why I, I stated at the uh, beginning that it's a little story, yeah. Some little story from these not one individual, individual, but for the two plural, for the united uh, females. So the mm -hmm. focus would be a small story and mm -hmm. then the plural little stories. Yeah, be collected together and share the life experience. And hoping that we find some similarities and we know uh, the issues they face. Okay, the challenge they, they have to carry on, they have to take in, yeah. So mm -hmm. with combining uh, and com comparing that to, to what you say that uh, the, the history of the literature, uh, mostly we focus on the writer will be I think male, right? Men, yeah. So the way they tell a story, it could be really different style of these women, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's interesting to to find the, the differences, yeah. Yes. It, it's just a part of my mm -hmm. research result, yeah. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Chen. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for thank you, this. Thank you, and I think Bahargaman is right. So probably the uniformity that uh, Bahargaman talks about, it's partially at least uh, because we live in patriarchal society. So women tend to be victimized and yeah, we can see gender inequalities uh, out there. And probably I think uh, the gender inequalities are shared by women, either Eastern women or Western women. So talking about that, um, about marriage migration, that's, it makes me think about when you're talking about marriage, uh, marriage migration, you're talking about a Southeast Asian and also Chinese women getting married to Taiwanese uh, men. So do you think that they, if the women, if the bride were Western women, do you think that they would also, um, face similar challenges? You mentioned that Taiwan people cannot accept uh, women bride, these foreign women bride, but they are all still Asian women. What if the women, the brides are Western women? Mm, I think, uh, yeah, more story I collected are from the 
the we say the uh, foreign brides from the uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, I think the they face uh, more difficulties than uh, the Western woman uh, who married Chinese men here. Uh, the, the situation is, of course, um, uh, they are more vulnerable mm -hmm. in, yeah, in adapting to the society. And uh, of course, uh, according to the survey of uh, social studies, I think this could be uh, more applied to the social studies. And uh, uh, it also depends on, for example, the like income uh, of the family she married to, okay? mm -hmm. the, the man, yeah. So uh, complicated to, to say uh, in general, but um, the situation would be the, the vulnerable of these uh, Southeast Asian females. Um, they have to face the problem of, um, I think languages, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also the, the traditional family concepts of culture uh, in, in the family she married to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for like uh, the, the waist uh, female, if they are foreign brides in Taiwan, um, of course, if she, she is a native speaker of English, the probably easier to adapt to the, the, the circumstance. Yeah. And uh, in reality, she probably can get a better job in a way. Yeah. Okay, so to show the independence of female, that's mm -hmm. also the you know, crucial factor to, to um, inference that uh, if you can adapt to the society well or not. That's, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, in reality, it's a, a very important concern. Right. In other words, you're saying that social classes also factor into the challenges faced by women. Yes. And it will be probably easier for Western women because we tend to think that Western women, they have better education maybe. And also, yeah, and also uh, when we are talking, you mentioned also about colonialism and yeah, in this case, then we are talking about post-colonial aspect as well that we still tend to value uh, white people higher right, than right. uh, non-Western people. Mm -hmm. But yeah. of course, these are all the stereotypes. I mean, right. uh, there are a lot of uh, our foreign brides that they perform very well. They even join the election to be, you know, our <laughs> local representative, our race residents. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, the government here uh, started to, you know, to build more channels to uh, and the platforms to help the, the these foreign spouses, you know, to mm -hmm. uh, demonstrate mm -hmm. their ability and also to shape their uh, their futures uh, and uh, to settle down in, uh, in in these countries. I think uh, the people here they started to already uh, be aware that. Um, it doesn't matter which country you are from, no, uh, which backgrounds. But once you 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 are the you know the spouse with our um, native Taiwanese, you are the part of the society, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people should have more compassion, and uh, I think uh, to be more understanding, to educate, be more understanding, to mm -hmm. accept each other. Right, so right. Just we need to break the stereotypes. That's all. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we still have. I think we still have about ten minutes for other questions from the audience for participants. Maybe our professors from Dipanagar University English Department would like to ask questions as well.
or I can ask a question. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure, please. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For example, uh, uh, in the department of in uh, English in the Pornagoras University, um, mm -hmm. so what what would be the literature uh, courses related to the topic I raise here? I lecture here. Is that any or uh, many the literature courses uh, uh, actually focus on you know more like a traditional way of teaching literature? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe, but Hedy, the chair of the English department can answer about courses. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, we also include uh, uh, women's study in our curriculum because we know that uh, this is very important for our students to learn more about this kind of approach. Then, uh, that's one of the considerations for taking these courses because uh, students have to learn more about the other approaches because they can be better in our, uh, our faculty. Right, so when we're talking about British literature, Professor Jennifer, so we teach more of uh, written text, but for American literature, I believe that uh, we also learn about movies. We teach about movies, um, documentaries, and yeah, maybe uh, any professors from the American studies can help to answer Professor Jennifer questions. So not only the so-called traditional literature, but also modern literature, when we are talking about the media, not just written text, but also visual text. I believe that other professors here can also share. Who Yenning maybe, Paharido? What about yeah. in Asian University, uh, Professor Jennifer? Some of the kind, the kinds of literature. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes, argument. I um, I'd like to perhaps say something uh, about uh, uh, Professor Chen's uh, question. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I can speak on behalf of everybody, but I think in Indonesia. Uh, there's a, this is probably a new, new uh, development. So there's a movement towards combining the study of literary texts with uh, other multimedia resources. So films and, 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 and things. And um, it's really not a, a fully established uh, discipline yet, I think, as far as, I'm, as far as I know, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm doing justice to other English departments in Indonesia. But uh, at the same time, I'd like to perhaps, uh, uh, this is a, a, nobody has asked any more questions. So I'd like to ask a, a, a question at the uh, same time, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if life writing is still considered as part of literature, because I think biographical studies have in recent time developed into a quite an, you know, quite an independent uh, discipline uh, in itself. So perhaps uh, Professor Chen can uh, say something about it. Okay, so yeah. what do you mean is uh, if uh, life writing still? Uh... The study of uh, biographical texts. Mm -hmm. I think it has in perhaps at the, I don't know, I've heard about uh, some uh, universities in the West, especially the University of Hawaii, offering mm -hmm. a advanced degrees in uh, the study of uh, biographies. Or mm -hmm. I'm not too sure if I'm saying things right, but it's it's. I'm just thinking aloud. And uh, uh, that uh, uh, the study of biographical texts or biographical studies, uh, mm -hmm. they have been increasingly accepted as a as an independent 
uh, sub uh, discipline, not anymore uh, as we have been uh, uh, thinking all this time as a sub discipline within the the uh, umbrella under the umbrella of literary studies or literature. What do you think about it? Do you do you see life writing as a uh, as a newly emerged uh, discipline, which is increasingly separate from the from the uh, discipline of literary studies or literature? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for argument. Mm -hmm. mm. I think uh, uh, in the current situation, as I can understand. Um, uh, the, the, the development of the literature studies, uh, they will consider that uh, this part of like uh, what you say, the like biography uh, studies, uh, actually it's also part of, uh, you know, uh, under the umbrella of uh, the literature disciplines right now. And just, uh, of course, for some uh, special program, they were consider this as uh, uh, independent discipline, yeah. But I think it's still under the umbrella of the the, uh, the literature as a whole. Okay, and then uh, the interesting to study the biography uh, uh, studies, uh, which uh, can reveal, of course, the the um, narratives uh, narrative styles of uh, these. Uh, uh, women writers or artists, um, especially. Uh, also, I I have some study on, um, for example, the the written text of uh, biography or autobiography or even pseudo biography of female writers. That these are interesting topics and issues. Then uh, to enrich uh, our understanding of literature. So I think uh, the, the discipline of literature should be more like a multi, um, a multiculturalized and uh, uh, more different aspects to help the student, the, the readers to get to know what we say, maybe in a way is a world literature, right? So the female literature, of course, and especially biography writing should be included. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Barkiman. I think uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, in the United States, uh, biography is still part of literature. But yeah, if uh, University of Hawaii has uh, opened a new discipline on biography study, that will be interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Barkiman. Thank you, all the audience. And thank you, Professor Jen. I'm afraid uh, we are... Out. <laughs> the end. Oh, would you like can to I, ask? Can mm -hmm. I have? Sure. Um, yeah. Can I? Uh, thank you. Thank you, moderator, uh, mm -hmm. and thank you, Professor Jen. I'm Nur Hayati Purba. I'm actually in the same department with Harkiman. So this is very interesting to. Hello, to, Bo Nur. Harkiman, <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> colleagues. Uh, we are from the same department. Uh, it's very interesting to learn today that, uh, yeah, live writing, yeah, mm -hmm. and placement in Asian women's literature and art. It's quite interesting. I uh, actually have so, so many questions, but I will make it simple, yeah. First, um, I respond to Professor James that, uh, yeah, live writing and displa displacement in Asia. Um, as far, as far as I learned till right now from the presentations that more illustrates about uh, mother figures. Sorry, it's quite a noisy here. Uh, it illustrates mother figures with madness, aphasia, absence from home, and like all mothers are silenced and then uh, without voices. Uh, I, I, Think about these um, you know, stereotypes, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, kind of hard because I figure out many women's uh, write, write, writers from Indonesia today uh, write more about women's success, as uh, mentioned by Pak Kimal. Can we find like women's success in 
in their works or in their writings. I uh, read more about women's uh, writings today in Indonesia are about women successes rather than this kind of uh, woman silence. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's very interesting that these stereotypes still running on until today. And mm -hmm. I hope uh, we learn that for next, we find more uh, the successes since that of the silence. Uh, that's one thing, but I may be wrong. I, I read more about successes more than the silence. But perhaps it's my uh, personal readings, uh, but uh, it is always interesting to find these stereotypes and I will read more about Asians, yes? And that's one thing, bro. And the second thing, uh, like what Harkiman said, that is, is this uh, live writing still under the umbrella of uh, literature? Yes, in our department, we learn more about uh, uh, what's uh, fictions? Yeah, in our department, mm -hmm. we teach more about fictions. But uh, when I study in the US, yes, uh, like biography, autobiography, life writing is still under the umbrella of literature. But uh, because we, perhaps because we have limited uh, curriculum in our department, we learn more about fictions instead of this uh, life writing, uh, biography, or we can say uh, we don't really learn about non-literary, uh, literary non-fictions. So um, I think I, I hope I can, I can uh, have more uh, giving information about this. I think uh, that's all I can say, but uh, I learned a lot today. I learned a lot that uh, about like writing and displacement in Asian women's literature and arts. And uh, mm -hmm. it's interesting, uh, prof. but that's what we find here. And that's what I learned so far. And it's, uh, it's really encouraged, encourages, encourages me to learn more about these uh, voices that mothers are silent without voices. Uh, it's kind of a really, really uh, uh what's what should i say it's uh, it's true but it's still like well uh let's do something not like just like woman silence something like that but thank you very much i think that's all i can say thank you thank you thank you professor Hayati. yeah yeah no, thank you yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can have a, uh, just a little bit of feedback of uh, what you uh, just uh -huh. uh, stated earlier. Um, the kind of like uh, the figure of uh, the struggle between like a um, mother or daughter relationship or the family uh, predicament. Uh -huh. I think uh, it, it's kind of like a, a very general type uh, uh, to transmit the inspiration of the challenge of these uh, women, okay, mm -hmm. being so vulnerable. And uh, of course, there are also, what I have mentioned earlier, a lot of story about a successful women mm -hmm. and uh, their leadership, mm -hmm. their success in their professions. And in the process of development of feminism that we call, it's the final stage we call celebration. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration, yeah, of the, you know, it's kind of like a, after so, so much hard work and so many, much hardship they have endured and they have uh, went, uh, gone through and at the, the final stage is the celebration. So uh, what we can see now, there are not also a story, uh, especially like a biography, autobiography, uh, talk about the success of the women. So I would say uh, the, these kind of writings, it's also a part of life writings, of course, of the female, and uh, give us a new respect to know uh, how joyful, you know, how how lucky that is to be to, to be a woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think right. it's wonderful to enrich our, uh, you know, different contests uh, of the literature. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Bunur Hayati. Would you like to add something else, Bunur? Yeah. 
uh, it's just interesting uh, that the research is more about photography. Yeah? Uh, I learned a new term today. Is it like like photo voice? Is it similar to that? Photo voice, Prof. Uh, that this photo voice terminology is kind of new to me, but uh, as far as I learned your presentation, it's like similar, the photography you are representing with the photo voice uh, system. Is that the same thing? Uh... I think because uh, it, it's also due to my background. I person personally, I I write points. Yeah, so I consider myself myself as a kind of like a poet. I publish also some poems writing, uh, my poetry collection, and uh, I am also kind of uh, uh, have the interest and in my professions focus on the 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 study of a combination of uh, literature and uh, visual arts. And uh, yeah. I also have learned photography. So it <laughs> started from my interest. I try to combine different medias that uh, include a, a written words and the visions. So when I uh, found out this uh, photographer, I was kind of like uh, inspired a lot uh, because uh, her way to narrate a story, her life experience is exactly like a uh, kind of uh, attached to what I really want to know and raise uh, my curiosity to dig more about her background and her story. So, so it's kind of like a, to be a scholar, you know, uh, um, what we, we, we feel the great joy is uh, everything you do the research, you can combine to your interest. And not just because uh, you have to do research, it's because you love it, right? You love this field. You want to uh, find out more issues and combine all everything together. You, you, you are interested in it, yeah. So I quite enjoy like to uh, know, I enjoy knowing these uh, artists or the writers who really can uh, attach to what I'm thinking and uh, uh, to, to let me uh, raise the, my inner feeling about get to know their works. Yeah. So from the visions, the image, they tell a story, I feel it's a new way for me to know how uh, she combine the image to, to the narrative. Because as uh, the photographer saying that at the beginning she cannot speak, she could not speak English nor writing, so for her it's very difficult to express her life story. So I think this is a way uh, for her. That's what I mentioned earlier. The new technology devices provide a new way to narrate story and uh, a new chance, the opportunity for these women, right? Uh, they are so vulnerable, but there's a chance for them to voice out. Yeah. Right. So it seems that also that uh, with images, photograph, uh, photographs, they can reach wider audience because, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that languages sometimes can be barrier. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Bunur Hayati. And also, I think uh, Bunur Hayati mentioned about let's do something so that we can have more life writing of women's success. Yeah. I think, uh, Professor Chen, you also mentioned that this life writing also inspire movement, women movement of Trans Asia Sister Association. Yes. I think that's a that's, uh, real thing that we can do to improve uh, the condition or the situation of women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because through the, you know, kind of like a, um, a unification, you know, and the, the organizations. Um, one, one individual can do probably is limited for mm -hmm. these uh, women if they unite together and that really produce a lot of things yeah, to, to help each other and to encourage mm -hmm. each other. So I think this is also the, the part of the celebration, you know, the stage of mm -hmm. uh, 
that's what I mentioned. When you listen to uh, the, the points from uh, a Chakan uh, in Khmer, it, it's, a, it's a lot of the same is right, uh, lost and sorrowed because uh, leaving your home country into a new land. But then at the end, they found out that they, that they, they have their missions to, to be in the new country, right? So they have mm -hmm. to uh, reconstruct their new identities. So when they realize that, they know they have to um, make this kind of uh, combination, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mingle different cultures, make the comfort becomes the motivation. Mm -hmm. So the songs here, they combine the Chinese and the Thai language. It's also kind of a uh, symbol that uh, symbolize that uh, the combination to, to the unification all together and the new identity to new selves, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the final, a couple of, we, we still have a couple of minutes to uh, before ending. So maybe you have a final words about identity again, about national identity. That's now it's becomes more challenging to identify national identity with diaspora and everything else that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe final words for that, Professor Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that um, it's like, like when, when uh, I, I have done this research and of course I'm continuing to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the identity, it's, a, it's like a, what uh, other pro, uh, scholars mentioned. It's not really fixed or rooted. Yeah, because it, this, we are under this, uh, you know, the, the situation of globalizations, the mobilities uh, inform more or less enforce us to, to have a challenge of the identity. So the more flexible, the better. Yeah. And uh, more, you know, the uh, compassion, tolerance, understanding. Uh, that's why we say the cross-cultural communication is important, right? Mm -hmm. to, to get to know each other uh, will help us um, uh, to, to, to be listening to other story and uh, in order to help us to understand each other. That's also the, the key point of reading these uh, life uh, story and the writing from these Asian women's artists and the writers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On that note, Professor Jennifer, I think uh, we're at the end of our interesting, fascinating discussion today. Thank you very much, uh, audience. Let's join me in uh, giving applause to Dr. Jennifer, Professor Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Professor Jennifer, thank you so much for the very wonderful and insightful session. Thank you, Mrs. Etta, for uh, it was a very amazing discussion. And as Mrs. Nurhaya Tipurba said earlier, we learned a lot today. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, here we have the Honorable um, Dr. Nur Hayati, the Dean of Faculty of Humanities, maybe um, she will deliver some words in this amazing occasion. But while we're waiting, um, I would like to invite all participants to maybe give your reaction with the reaction feature we have here in the Zoom meeting, or maybe the comments, living constructive comments for the Professor Jennifer um, for the amazing knowledge you can uh, deliver your comments. Um, for the form of appreciation. While we're waiting for Dr. Nur Hayati, we can leave your comments, we can leave a reaction. We can use the reaction feature here. We can leave a love or applause to Mrs. Etta, thank you so much. Mrs. Etta, she's from Louisiana State University. Um, well, as a student, we maybe we will follow her path. <laughs> okay, to all my friends, maybe from 2018, 
batch 2018, you can uh, leave some appreciation by a comment in the chat box or by a um, reaction feature. Thank you for excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation. Um, we gain a lot of new insights, new knowledge, very useful for us, uh, especially for um, batch 2018, maybe, because, yeah, we will finish our education this year, and it is, maybe it is, will be very useful for us. Thank you so much, Professor Jennifer, once again. Um, okay, we have the Honorable Dr. Nur Hayati, the Dean of Faculty of Humanities. Dr. Nur Hayati, you have some words to tell us in the session. The floor. Okay. Uh, the thank you, Angi. Hello, Jennifer, <laughs> how are you? Hi, yeah, long mm -hmm. time no see. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet Being you. Three years more, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm so sorry because I've just joined this meeting because um, there is um, yeah um, there is activity in the university, so I um, I attend the activity in the university, and I have just joined this meeting now. Yeah, and uh, for Jennifer, thank you so much for being a speaker in this opportunity and also thank you so much because uh, you allow us uh, to send our student for CTS in uh, ASEAN University and we hope that uh, next year maybe uh, next year we will send uh, some of our students again and we hope that our student is uh, our uh, a good student for you <laughs> and uh, okay uh, Jennifer uh, we hope that someday you can visit uh, Semarang again, yeah. Definitely. And we we will travel around uh, Central Java as you ask in my Facebook, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And Bu Eta, thank you very much for uh, being moderator, and also thank you very much for Pa uh, Octiva Heri Chandra as uh, the chief of the English. Uh, department English uh, program study for uh, handling this uh, activity, this seminar, and also thank you so much for all of the participants that uh, attend this meeting, and thank you for the teams. Thank you so much, and goodbye. Thank you. Okay, thank Hope you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, um... Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, before we close, I would like to take a group photo for the session. Okay, so we welcome all the participants to please turn on your camera feature and take the session. Okay, um, so once we're ready, the picture will be taken on my sign. Three, two, one. Okay, one more. Oh, we have how many slides here? Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, um, I guess it's enough. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Professor Jennifer, once again. We are finally come to the end of our session. It has been a great and wonderful morning with all of you today. And may all of you have a great day. Thank you Thank very you. much for your attention. Thank you for participating. Good afternoon. Thank you, Professor Chen. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Thank Jennifer. You, Thank you, Professor. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank, Thank you, you Jennifer. Hope to see everyone in the near future. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be waiting. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, -bye. Bye. Hello. <laughs> if I only show up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. In contact. Okay.